yeah, this is Roland Menguan. Um, uh, just showed the Mega Man S6 run. It was a lot of fun. And yeah, thanks for having me again. And this is uh, now Fire Emblem. Uh, this is the first Mega uh, Fire Emblem game for the uh, the North American that got released to North America. And we are going to exploit the game into a lot in a lot of ways that you can imagine. Um, mm -hmm. So with me, I have like Grand Grand and Nitrodon. Say hi, guys. Hello. Hello, hello. So this is a tool of experience that I developed with alongside with Nitrodon a long time ago. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of things to explain um, in a quick session. So we can start the run. Uh, can we come with hmm? Okay, so three, two, one, go. So yeah, this is Fire Emblem. As I say, this is the first game in in the North American release. So we are starting the game of without any kind of save games at all. So we so we are going to say right away. This is Link. Link is our main lord of the game, uh, at least for this mode. Basically, this game is divided be between modes. This we have Link mode, uh, Elwood mode, and Eternal normal mode. And each one of them has a normal mode and a hard mode as well. So since we are game, uh, starting the game from clean, we can only do Link normal mode. And it is basically a tutorial were because since this was the first game for North America, they decided to show to introduce a tutorial so American players can get to know more or less how this plays out. Uh, at the very uh, beginning, we on, uh, disabled the animations to make the, basically the task a lot faster. Having the animations on basically say uh, off, uh, off, sorry, basically saves like uh, 20 minutes more or less. So yeah, most most of the things that happen here are fixed. You actually cannot change a lot of things, but uh, we actually will get to exploit. There is a glitch that basically allows us to change the order of the sessions of things that happens. Um, basically, by holding a lot of buttons at the same time, we can actually change the way the game was supposed to be played. And given that the RNG is fixed for some of the actions, you will see the action out of order, and that's why you will see, if you are familiar with the game, you will see a lot of things not being as you remember it to be. Yeah, so if, if you're playing lane mode in uh, hard mode, you can, actually can completely forget about the tutorial, so that's usually what's done in the speedrun. Yep. But here, since we're on a clean file, we can we have to go through the tutorial steps, and we'll just use glitches to skip that. Because that, that's way too hard to pull off in, our, uh, in real time. I tried, and... Uh, yeah, definitely hard. Um, you, you, when you see the arrow wiggling a lot, it's because we are manipulating the RNG to actually get the, the outcome that we want. So, for example, we, when you see the, that strong animation, is that means it, 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 the that attack was a critical. Uh, we will cancel this because the game wants us to visit those houses at the bottom. We will move all the cards to the top. In the previous chapter, it was required for us to lead, to save to get a level and get strength in that level up. Uh, now, can we get strength in this level up? This is required uh, uh, to basically to save a turn. We will put both Ken and save the, those are the Cavaliers that you see there on the screen to actually get in, into the same space to actually hit this ball and then move Lee inside. If we were short by one uh, by one step, we wouldn't be able to kill the destroy the wall in just one turn. And that's why we have to get to this. So now we will use either King of Saint, I know I can't remember to be honest, I believe mean, that's King, to actually kill the boss, and then we can use Lee to actually seize the throne. So that's chapter two, and now we're going to chapter three. Yeah, so the problem with walls is that you can't create them, uh, so that's why we had to go with this work list. Yeah, yeah that's, that's correct. So now we recruit a uh, wheel, we fake out the action, so basically Florida was supposed, the Pegasus that you see on the line, was supposed to attack the mercenary on the top. But since we didn't skip that, uh, can attack that archer and that archer fire back from close range, which is normally not possible at all. But since it was forced by the tutorial, then that happened. So now we will use Kent basically uh, to beat most of the enemies. And we will also use Florina. Florina is a key part of this speedrun. She is basically the flyer that we want to raise and use in later in the game. And we need to give her the experience from now, from this uh, uh, from this point. There was some careful management in regards to experience to basically make her get the experience that we want at a given point, but also to not get more than the required experience as well. Um, sometimes it is faster 
to actually create all the enemies and sometimes it is not depending on how much time you have to spend to manipulate that so that's why we didn't create like every single enemy sometimes it's better just to double them yep. uh, then we scan to actually create the boss and then we move forward to chapter four um, something so yeah, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Um, so something interesting about this chapter as well is that if you don't recruit well because you are not for you are forced to by the tutorials, the game will actually crash. Uh, yeah, so that's another big point. Yeah. So one thing here is that we were supposed to move Lin to the right, so that gray unit on the right of her will attack her and miss it. But that made that mercenary attack that wall and completely miss. You normally cannot miss on walls. They are they are locked you to 100 percent hit rate. So we uh, Dorcas. Dorcas was supposed to create another enemy, but since we didn't skip that, say was able to actually create a wall, which is another thing that is impossible. So a lot of things <laughs> were things with walls in this game. Sorry for that, but that's how it is. And so we basically stockpile all units inside this spot. The objective here is basically to survive and defend the green unit at the top. So we move all the all our units to this spot, so we can bottleneck all the enemies. So we will get only one attack per enemy turn. And yeah, we, they will also only attack will because the thing is when you put all the enemies or, or, or some units into the single space, only the unit in the because the internally there is a list of units. And the only the last, uh, the unit, the unit at the bottom of that list can actually get attacked. You, the others, the other units cannot actually get attacked. Uh, I was wondering something. Um, you are forced to recruit Dorcas, right? So, because like, if you don't recruit Dorcas in hard mode and you just leave him in front, he's just never going to attack Lin. Therefore, you're going to skip on the all the attacks for yeah, first bandit. Right, but you have to select mm -hmm. Dorcas in the next action, and if you don't recruit Dorcas, you can't select them. Mm -hmm. Oh, so then you're in trouble, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, um, uh, uh, this trick where you put multiple needs in a single space, it is a glitch, and it's a frame perfect glitch. Basically, you need to confirm and cancel at the same time, and then you, and, and, and do it at a specific frame, and you can actually do that. We were supposed to actually heal Eric with the, with the, that cleric that you see down there, but we skipped that, and then we will use Florina to pick up Link. We will create this enemy, and then we will drop off Link near to the boss, because we want to also give experience to Link. Uh, we will create Ken first. Uh, so, sorry, we will, Ken will create this enemy, sorry for that. We will get a level up. Ken is also one of the units that is commonly used um, in this round. Not uh, At some point, we won't use it anymore, but before that point gets, uh, we actually use it. So we, will, we use Link, Link will create twice against the boss, and we'll get 100 experience. We need Link to be a level 5 before the boss at the uh, chapter 10. Otherwise, we cannot defeat him like, at least easily. Um, so we will use Marina to actually sell an iron bow and other weapons to get the javelin that will be used and Lee will just create this archer to add more experience and Ken will create the other enemy on the top. We also want Lee to get a specific minimum strength and speed so we can double the, the boss attempt to take and that will defeat them. Uh, more on what these stats do uh, later. Uh, this chapter we need to basically put ourselves in a single tile a uh, tile at the top that's and as as we occupy the those blue tiles we actually get to open up the the map so we will use florina here to actually create this mercenary to get more experience uh same and can uh, well same we will compile we'll go with her while can go for the boss at the top that will be revealed soon so we now we are going to open this chest, which has a hygienic rock, it will, it will be used later in the game. Uh, we will create this enemy for Florina so she gets experience, and then we will open this door with a door key that we got with same. Then uh, it will attack Florina, Florina will creep back and kill it, and then we can use that tile on the next turn. That will reveal the boss, and then same can actually create the boss. And uh, it needs a hit and a critical. Usually, yeah. crit goals at this point of the game is like two, three percent chance to happen. So, like getting crits like that, it's uh, it's no mean fee. It's totally yeah. possible to get that uh, in uh, real time. By the way, it just takes really long usually to actually get the correct seed. Yeah. Um, now we have Lucy. Lucy will attack this shaman, so then Florina can actually kill it. This shaman, we have zero percent crit to, uh, possibility to actually create this enemy, so that's why we use Lucy's. 
So then Frena can actually do the final blow and get experience. Um, now we will use Neil. This is a bar that actually can sing and other characters can actually move again. So now we will use Frena again and actually create the boss with a javelin. And since we only need to kill the boss in this chapter, well, that's GG. Yeah. So now we're going to chapter 8, and chapter 8 is a uh, route chapter. Route chapter is basically you need to defeat everyone. They basically kill everyone, last of them. That's a Fire Emblem Treehouse of Reference. Um, now we use Florina to we insane with Ken, sorry, and we will drop uh, him uh, at the bottom. So Ken and Florina will deal with these enemies here, while Lucius deal with the enemies at the right. Uh, Lucius is a male. Um, even though you might, you might not think it is by looking at him, and he will deal with the enemies at the right. Um, oh, there's some characters though. Sorry? Some, char some characters also think he's female. Ah, uh, yeah. So, we will treat some of these enemies. Uh, Florina needs to create two, these two cavaliers in actually, to actually defeat them. Florina has a decent chance of creating because she has a Slim Lance. A Slim Lance gives 5% create a uh, bone script uh, so that's why she actually can create more often than other units at this point of the game at least uh, the enemy that you see in the middle is uh, an archer in a ballista it's basically a weapon that the archers can use to actually fire at really long range um, so we will use Kent to deal with the enemies at this part of the, of the map Florina will kill the archer and the ballista Nils will play music for Florina and Florina will deal with the other archer that you see at the at the, at the middle. We'll, then Ken will just deal with the others. Yes, so, so you would think that uh, an archer would uh, target Pegasus Knight because Pegasus Knights are weak to bows. They take twice more damage in this game. Three, you know, three times more damage in uh, most Fire Emblem. Mm. Uh, but since Kent is equipped with uh, one range weapon, uh, the archer is actually going to target the and need the, the unit that will not attack back. Uh, so it yeah. will target Kent instead of Florina, so that's why we had to dance Florina instead of dealing with it on any face. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so just like that we defeat this chapter, and now we are going to chapter 9. We are going really fast because the chapters at, the, at this point are super uh, short. This is a, a C chapter. Uh, we, here we are forced normally to promote Wallace. Wallace is the in the very middle. But we have we use the Angelic Road to actually skip uh, the promotion altogether. We actually needed to use any kind of item. But given that Wallace at the start of the map doesn't have full HP, you cannot use vulnerabilities or any other kind of of, of items. Oh, so the strategy that's, right. that's so good. I think yeah. the item needs to be in the fourth slot of your inventory too. Not, oh, not sure, I, didn't, I didn't remember that, but maybe that's the case. It's, it, it's basically you are trying to break in the game, so yeah. So basically, the strategy was to bring over here so Florina can, can drop you here. She will give you enough experience. Uh, she will need a little bit more experience for chapter 10, boss. And Link is good for defeating um, mounted units and knights as well because she has a Manikari. Manikari is a sword that only she can use that is effective against cavaliers and well, basically mounted units and, and knights as well. So that's why we use her to defeat the boss here. Then we will see, we will move to chapter 10, and this is the final chapter of Link Normal Mode or Link Mode altogether. So we will use Link, uh, Florina will rescue Link, and then we will play with Nils, and then Florina will drop off Link at uh, the bottom. Then Florina will deal with this uh, knight and actually get the enough experience to be at level 5 and just have enough attack and speed to actually double and critical this boss in one, in basically defeat him in one turn or in one round of combat. So yeah, now we will basically manipulate RNG with this wobbling, move uh, Florina out of the way and then crit twice and also miss because the, that boss can one hit KOs us as well, at this point at least. So then, uh, next turn, we will just cease and we will never use Link anymore. <laughs> bye some, bye people, some people will be sad, some people will be happy. I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> well, we had to use her because she's the main character and she has to seize the gates, but not, from now on, she's not going to be the main character. Yeah, pretty much. So now we'll be going to Eliquid Normal Mode. Uh, this is basically the main plot of the game. Limo was basically added to as a tutorial for, like I said, for American players that are new to the Fire Emblem franchise. 
Um, yeah, there are a few things that we would like to explain now that we have this cutscene because since we haven't beat this game, it, basically the game is we started from clear, we cannot skip all this cutscene. So, Nitro, maybe you can explain us a little bit about the game and how basically it works so our viewers can actually know more or less what's happening. Okay, so what, what do I explain? Let's see. Stats. Well, I can explain the stats. Okay, so yes, HP please. is HP, of course. Mm -hmm. Strength, uh, you want to gain a lot because each point of strength kind of translates to one more point of damage you deal for each attack. Skill is just really good. You want that, just yep. accuracy, crits, that sort of thing. Speed, basically you can double with speed and also avoid more attacks, but mostly uh, if you have four more attack speed than the enemy, you can double attack. And see, defense, resistance, self-explanatory, usually not worth bothering to get. Luck, not really worth it either. <laughs> And then there is that that you can't upgrade, which is uh, movement. Every walking unit is five movements. If they are promoted, it's six. Um, mounted units are seven movement. Uh, promoted mounted units are eight. There is an item that you can that will let you boost your movement by, by two later. And then there is constitution, which uh, deals with attack speed and if you can rescue or not a unit. Um, basically. Right. Yeah, uh, the, your constitution uh, is your aid, so the, uh, and if your aid is higher than the constitution of a unit, you can rescue them. Uh, it's slightly different for mounted units. Mounted units, it's uh, for male, it's 25 minus their constitution, if that's their aid. Uh, and female cavaliers, it's 20 minus their constitution, if that's their aid. So usually, a mounted unit, you want them to have as low constitution as possible so they can rescue as many possible people as possible. And the more con you have, the more it's going to deal with the weight of the weapon. So if they, you have a weapon that is seven weight, and uh, seven, uh, yeah, seven weight, and you've got a con of six, then that means that's minus one on your attack speed. So speed is, uh, attack speed is speed minus the uh, weight thingy. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things going on in the back end of this game that normally doesn't get explained to you, so... Yeah, this attack speed is short, super critical for us because we want to double as many enemies as possible. Um, and some weapons we don't need like to double, but yeah, it's better to just have double as many possible enemies as we can. So... Yeah. Yeah, since it's a task, we only really just need 1% crit on enemies. Uh, well, as long as it doesn't take too long to burn RNG, that is, but on a task, that's really not too long. All right. I don't know, but if you need like two crits in a turn uh, in an enemy phase, then yes, you'll need to. You'll want more. You'll you'll want at least like five or ten crit. Yeah, it's kind of a difficult balance to figure out. As much as much as you can. But now we are in Elliwood mode. This is chapter eleven. So now we have Elliwood. That's our main lore in this uh, mode, basically. And uh, the guy we, with we, the white we, horse is Marcus. He's like really powerful yeah he's a what we call a jagan he's a mounted unit basically that is overpowered compared to the rest of your of your army and we will be using the heck out of him basically um so now we will we will be safe seizing with elwood instead and check out this triple crit on, on Elliwood. Basically, we will create three enemies one after another. Basically, Elliwood has a rapier, that's another sword that only he can use, that has, like, I believe, 10 more critical yes, chance. 10% chance. So that's a 0.001% yeah. chance to happen. Yeah. So now we just create the boss with uh, Marcus and then we seize with Elliwood. Now we're chapter 12. Chapter 12 is a route map. We will need to defeat basically every boss, every, every enemy unit, sorry. Uh, we will use Marcus because Marcus basically can one hit KO. Like basically, he touch them and they die. That's basically how it works out. Uh, this only happens in Elite Number Mode, so like in Enter Harbor Mode, you actually don't can do that. Um, we, well, you, you, you can actually, you can actually still just double hit them because Marcus has that much speed. Like but really, Marcus is a win button. Yeah, he's still like <laughs> strong enough. So Marcus will do the enemies at the right. Uh, on the top, we will see Hector and, and Oswin. They are uh, Hector is another lord, but not like the main protagonist of this world. So he's not as essential as Elliot. 
So they will deal with these enemies at the top while Marcos deal with the rest. He is required in some maps, and if he if he dies, it's game over, just like Lin and Ellen would. Yeah. Right, if any lord dies, it's game over. We didn't actually mention that. Yeah. Because that's also a thing. If you don't know Fire Emblem, if your character die in a map, he's dead for real. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. So yeah, so you uh, have to be careful when, when what you do with your units to just, to just so they don't die. Or you're a task and you get crits on everything, and even if they have 80% hit, you still dodge. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yep. Uh, although, enemy faces are kind of tricky to manipulate. But the specific, it depends, of course. But the later you are in the game, the more things you can do. Basically, you have higher skills. The skills also affect your critical chance. And the more you have, the more crit chance you have. You can also can get killer weapons that, of course, boost your critical chance as well. But that, with chapter 11 out of the way, we go to chapter 12. Ah, sorry, chapter 13. This is a C -bomb. It should be slightly clarified. You can't actually do any manipulation during the, the enemy phase. But you do be in player phases what you get in enemy phase. Yeah, that's correct. So we will use uh, the Lords. Basically, the Lords are one of the few units that, actually, that can actually cross rivers. So we will use Elewood and Etcher to actually move Marcus from the left side to the right side. Uh, horses cannot actually traverse like rivers. So that's why we use it. Marcus with his high constitution, he can pick up a horse and an old man uh, to both uh, from one side of the river to the other. And then we will move any to the left side as well. So then we Marcus can deal with the rest of the enemies. Um also we use a lower here to get a mine. My mine is super useful later in the game. You will see why. And then we will drop Elliwood in, in a point that we, he can reach at the reach the, the gate. And then Marcus will deal with the boss and then Elliwood can seize. And then we can clear this chapter. Something worth mentioning as well is that on units that we don't need stats on, like Elliwood. Uh, it's better to have empty level ups and level ups with stats because it takes a little bit more frames uh, mm -hmm. to get a plus one in a stat, so we can try and manipulate empty level ups on units as much as possible. Yeah, it's really hard though to get em completely empty level ups because um, if you get an empty level up, the game is going to reward your stats so that you have a better chance to get a plus one. So usually you're going to see like one or two stats. Yeah, for chapter 14, this is a round map, so we need to defeat every single enemy. We almost arrow to the left and to rec recruit Eric later in the game, and uh, later in the next turn. Um, we will be clear of these enemies on the right side. So then Elibu will take. Uh, sorry, uh, Marcus will take the enemies on the left, and Lowell will take the enemies from the lower left right. Uh, sorry, lower left uh, part of the map, sorry. Um, lower part of the map. We, um, yeah, so we will give Marcus an steel axe, and with the steel axe, Marcus can one kill every single enemy in this part of the map, which is like a hilarious. So yeah, touch and die, touch and die. <laughs> That's uh, Marcus in a nutshell. Even on yeah. in, like 10 chapters, he will still like two shots enemies, that's nuts. Yeah. Um, bro, do you have some donations to read? Oh, we currently don't have any donations, but I just wanted to remind our chat that we are only a couple of runs away from our Rename the Party incentive for the Final Fantasy run. So if you want to help create some awesome names for our characters, make sure to get those donations in as soon as possible. Nice. So now we will recruit Eric and then we'll create this uh, archer and then Marzu can go all the way to the left and low into the lower to the lower part of the map to, uh, to deal with that night, long night that they waiting there. <sighs> so yeah, uh, we need a critical for this boss. Oh because otherwise we could just double, but double is slower than just critical. Um, yeah, we basically Marcus will deal with the rest of the enemies here and we will get a serialness, which is nice. The difficulty of this map, if you're trying to finish it in the lowest amount of turns possible uh, and you're not trying to, like you're not manipulating RNG, is that uh, in turn 3, I believe it's turn 3, um, it's going to start raining and then rain is going to make you move only two tiles, one or two tiles with your units, so it makes advancing really, really hard and makes you lose a lot of time. So clearing this map can be annoying sometimes. Yeah, so but unfortunately we have to clear the map before that happens, so that's not an issue for Taz. 
And you you see a gate there, but trust me, you don't need you. See, see that gate won't get to get to finish the map. <laughs> so now we're going to chapter 15. This is a seas map, and uh, we will using the mine here. So there is a neat thing called the mine glitch. We will basically grab uh, for in a grab early one most of the way. So when an enemy uh, lands on a mine, you can reset the game, and you can actually now manipulate uh, basically all the enemies. You are stealing enemy face when you reset the game, and then you make just enemies drop their weapons. We will use game to actually get a horse layer here, so that we will use later. And then we will just make Florina drop anyone so he can see in the third. We move the boss as well, uh, make him res rescue someone else, another enemy. So yeah, that's a neat thing about uh, my glitch. We use that strategy because Florina is kind of weak still. And, and she will look like she will be surrounded. She will be surrounded by enemies, and she won't. We will need like a need an extra turn, more or less, to at least clear that that the map. So and it takes have... forever as well to go through the enemy phase of of this map, like better yeah. off just glitching it. Yeah. So we got... as well, she doesn't hit hard, and she gets surrounded if she doesn't kill the enemies. Yeah. So now we got Lee back, uh, and some of part of the crew from Nemo. Uh, we make we make sure that Air gets some experience. That's uh, very important for later in the game. Uh, but we just do that now. Um, so he doesn't need here. any stats. He just needs experience. Yeah, pretty much. So we will. The strategy is to Florina will help out uh, to clear the way. And then Marcus will carry Elliot all the way to the throne, which is all the way to the north, and you not need to do this uh, all this long path to actually get there. So, um, if you're trying to finish the map as, uh, with the lowest amount of turns possible, you can actually clear this map one turn faster than what we're doing here. But it requires using a lot more units, and in a task or in an, even in a speedrun, using the, the lowest amount of uh, units so that turns go as fast as possible is faster than just uh, using a lot of units and make, doing a lot of actions. Yeah, the low turn strategy involve a lot of rescue uh, tra dr dropping and stuff. Yeah, and also making some other units get experience as well, so they are useful. Um, and yeah, we, we don't want to give as much experience to uh, units that we won't be using in the long term. Yeah, we, Marcus, Florina, and Urk needs experience for a, a different reason, which uh, people who uh, know, the, know this game might be able to guess. I mean, yeah, I don't yeah. think it needs that much more, right? No, <laughs> no. <it's> just... <laughs> I believe he already has all the experience that he needs, so he doesn't even need to level up. So this is this part of the strategy. Uh, we uh, we dropped Elwood. Elwood doesn't have. A, he he only has a sword. So all the archers try uh, attacking, and then we are trapped. We will use Earth to move so to burn some energy, so then we can actually kill one of the archers, and then Marcus can grab him and just go. Yeah, so something about the, the path wriggling thing that we're doing. Uh, basically, the game is going to burn RNG to determine the path that you're going to take. If the path that you're trying to make is going to take cost a lot more than what you're trying to do. So, for example, an 11 move, uh, move thing uh, on a 9 movement unit, that's not possible. So, the game is going to do a path retrace and figure out what the path is going to be with RNG, and that's what we're doing. So, you can't really burn RNG with Marcus when he only have like two tiles to move around. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we will explain in more in depth how do we actually RNG manipulate uh, or, or how do, does it work more later because we have so much things to explain in the meantime. Uh, so basically, Elliot already sees in the throne. Now we get to chapter 17, which is a defeat boss map. Um, yeah, and it's pretty quick. Enemies can't reach you at all, so they don't move. Yeah, so we basically got for Irina to actually rescue Elliot, and then we're moving a position that no one can reach us, so no one even tries. So now we move to this position. Oh, this Chama will attack us, but no one else can actually reach us, so they won't try as well. So now we drop Elliot, and then Florina will deal with the boss, and then we just clear the map. Just like that. And now we're going to chapter 18, which is another defeat boss map but uh, a little bit more complicated than this. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. fun the, fact it's... about... Yes, go ahead. That's the one I actually uh, recorded this one. Yeah. This chapter. It's actually also the... Um, 
as a speedrun strat. A fun fact about this uh, chapter, if we were to do this chapter now, it would be very different. Because there was a glitch that was discovered um, a, a few years ago now, probably like five years ago, uh, with a torch staff that we can get on this chapter, and it allowed us to do the same thing as uh, what we did with the um, mine. Uh, but at the time this video was made, this task was made, it was nine years ago, we didn't know about it. Uh, and it would save like, what, probably 10 minutes? 10 to 15 minutes? Yeah, like in the whole run, you mean? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. Perfect. Yeah, definitely. Even Maybe even more, but uh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, the strategy for this map uh, is basically to move Florina all the way down where the boss is. It's a photo warm up, so you cannot really see enemies until they are nine in the close to you. We will move uh, Florina next to Ohai. Ohai is the boss of this map, and it's a pretty strong one in, real in comparison to the previous bosses. And while the units at the top left corner are just there avoiding conflict while Florina deals with this. This also gives uh, Florina a lot of experience, like 100 experience because she defeated a boss and this a promoted unit as well. So we use the Horse Slayer, so Florina actually can, with a crit, can actually defeat this boss. You can actually double this boss right now. Uh, yeah, it has like ridiculous speed. So we needed like, uh, and the horse layer is uh, like a very heavy weapon and actually makes it hard for the player to actually double or not get double as well. So yeah, we needed a crit for that. So we are in chapter 19. And the chapter 19 is a seize map. Um, the strategy basically here is to make Marcus carry anyone and deal with the enemies at the top. While the rest of the group, because uh, Lin and Enter are required to be deploying this map. So they will be like uh, uh, staying at this area where they will try to get as little confidence as possible while Marcos deal with the rest. Yeah. We we'll press the win button and we win, surprisingly enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you have to kill a lot of people because it's a narrow corridor. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, this thing sound. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it takes some significant time. So, yeah. So, uh, Pro, do you have any donations by any chance? Uh, still no donations right now, but uh, I gotta say, I am absolutely enjoying this run. I've actually never uh, played the Fire Emblem series. Oh, interesting. If you enjoy tactical games, those games are like really, really fun to play. Um, yeah, obviously, like, you don't like me. destroy the game as it, uh, as crazily when you're doing it the first time around, but uh, it's a lot of math and a lot of trying to figure out your turn, and, uh, and then your whole strategy crumbles as you miss us 90%. Yeah, and the, and the is also awesome. Like the character lore and how you get to actually know each other individually. It's like it's not just like seeing anime in in kind of so depending on how you look at it, of course. And if you actually care about that, but yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, Elliwood, uh, Marcus will deal with the boss next turn, and we drop Elliwood this to this position, so enemies don't go inside the the main area, the the throne area. Um, a quick main thing is that you will see that Edger and Matthew, Matthew is the thief that you can see next to Edger, uh, he will basically steal a door key from this knight, which is like a hilarious. And now, now we will use uh, Marcus to create the boss, and then Eliwood will now seize this. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, we will use this door key at some point later. Uh, I think we could right. be that thief right there, but we don't because who needs him? Yeah, exactly. So basically, we got the key because we won't use Matthew anymore at, at uh, after some point. So this is chapter twenty, a uh, kill boss uh, chapter. Uh, we will use uh, Marcus and Florina here. Florina will get the last spirits that she requires to be promoted. So and basically, we will, yeah, uh, yeah, we will get the item this turn. I uh, know the the turn after this to actually be able to promote. I know the next story, sorry. So Ninian dance for free, so Florina reaches further, and Marcus does go all the way to the right. So Florina will visit that house at the top right to get an, an, an Elysian Whip. Elysian Whip basically promo allows level 10 flying units to promote to, to their promotion class, basically. 
And then the next turn, we will move uh, Marcus in a, in a specific position that the boss will try to attack him, and then we will he will counter with a critical and, the, and finish him. And also, you notice we'll actually go around an enemy we can't see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a pretty great thing because if we were to go straight, we will get like a uh, stop, and then we won't be we won't be able to reach the boss. So that hit and crit. So, and something just like that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, in, no, in keep going. Like that's the end of the chapter. But like the, the movement he's doing uh, to do the pass cursor thing, um, you can actually do it, RG. Like basically, uh, the way he's doing it is holding B while moving, which makes your cursor go uh, one tile per frame. And uh, it's like one of the frame, most so. interesting thing to um, <laughs> to execute in uh, when running from MGBA is uh, doing this uh, perfect movement with a. Uh, while holding B, it's also really hard. Yeah, um, now we promoted Florina. Florina was a Pegasus Knight and now he's a Falcon Knight. So she will now have one more extra movement, which is really appreciated. And we also got uh, Isadora. Isadora is another Paladin, just like Marcus. Uh, Not but, as good, but starts uh, in a better position. Yeah, exactly. So it will be useful through the game, but not as much. Uh, uh, you also saw that we move it. Uh, Matthew and Ninia to the left. We will basically recruit another an enemy unit uh, that has a mine. So we want to use that mine to do a mine glitch uh, at some point in the future. Fun fact about each other is useful at one point. Fun, fun fact about this, uh, this chapter: when I was routing um, uh, Fire, the Fire Emblem Seven speedrun. We used to uh, use um, Hollywood to recruit health, and then at some point I watched the test and I was like, wait a minute, you can use Ninian here. Yeah. <laughs> that changed my stress entirely. Yeah, if you don't actually see a video or look out for a guy, you won't actually know that because it's so random. That conversation is also random at all, if I recall correctly. So, yeah, no reason at all to for that to be to make sense, but whatever. Um, we are going to chapter 22 now. This is a desert chapter and this is a rock chapter, so we need to defeat all the enemies. Desert is an interesting gimmick because all food units, except except for magical units, can, uh, can, can actually move very well in desert. So they will move like one tile or two tiles depending on their movement. Magical food units can actually move all the way without any issues. Uh, mountain units have uh, it's, it's even harder for for, for like horses. Like uh, Florina, see, she flies. She just can go whatever she wants with her Pegasus. Yeah, the right area of the map is uh, just not desert, but yeah, it's plain. Yeah, so we will use Marcos and Isadora to deal, deal with these enemies in this area. Florina will go and defeat the bosses. Well, well Florina already defeated one, and Marcos defeated the other. So now Florina will go to the left and clear out the enemies. There is a green unit at the, at the middle. They are very good. Green unit, this is Pent. Pent is a unit that we will use later in the game. She's, he's basically a sage, and he's basically a promoted mage. And he can move without any issues in the desert at all. So she he will, go around, really he, will go around, he will go around and kill all enemies that gets in contact with him. Yeah, so and also in a couple turns you'll notice we uh, repeatedly open and close the item menu that's to manipulate a completely different RNG. Mm -hmm. There's a separate RNG that's only used for a few things including getting hidden items in the desert. Yeah. So basically, in the des in desert maps in Fire Emblem, this is being a normal trend. There are items uh, uh, spread around the map, and if you land in a specific position, you can actually get you you have a chance to actually get the item. If you are a thief, I believe you have a hundred percent chance of, of getting the item. If you are not a thief, then you have like a percentage. I don't remember how much. Only eleven, I think. Okay, so we will close and open the, the menu a lot, so we manipulate that to happen. So now we got Phyllis Mike. Phyllis Mike is a really useful item that we will use at the end game. And we will also we will also get the Luna Tom here that we will also use at the end of the game. Yeah, Phyllis Might is a uh, dance slash bard song item that instead of uh, refreshing your turn, it gives the uh, gives the uh, person plus ten strength or magic. Yeah, very good. And Luna Tomb allows you to bypass completely the resistance of enemies. Yeah, uh, and just use yours. 
roll magic to deal damage. Yeah, um, we are now in chapter 23. So this is a kill boss uh, map. So the strategy here is to use Hawkeye. We got Hawkeye, this is a Berserker that we got that, that, that was a Greek unit in the previous map. He basically, he basically he's a, a sword master with that uses ads, basically, with both has way beefier strength. And there's also Wallace, the unit that we what the, they wanted to us promote, but, they, but, they, but we did it. Uh, so yeah, we will create Hawkeye, this enemy with Hawkeye, then we will use Marcus to go all the way up, and then use Ninian so Marcus can get all the way up. And then in the enemy turn, the boss will attack us, and then we will attack him. We can we can and not attack the enemy boss because he was in the fog. So we need to actually see the ball, the end, an enemy unit before we can actually attack. So we just wait there and they attack us, and then we creep back. Um, this is chapter 24. This is a survive map, so we will need to wait for a certain number of turns and survive all the time to actually move on. This is the Vida map, basically, uh, but we won't see Vida at all. So we will use Pen to deal with the enemies at the right. We will use Hawkeye to deal with the enemies at the, uh, the bottom right. We will use Marcus to defeat some other enemies. Florina will deal with the enemies at the middle and the lower left corner with some help, of, help from Heath. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, once we deal with the all, because the strategy is to basically defeat all enemy units that moves. That's what we want. And after that, we just need to wait for the turns to pass real quick. We also got Pent and Luis. Pent was the sage unit that was in the desert map, and Luis is his wife. And they are really cute units that they will be using. A pen specifically will be used a lot. So, uh, Luis, more or less, here and there. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, uh, do you have any donations, Rob, by the way? <laughs> Uh, not seeing any donations right now. Uh, still keeping a track on those, and uh, we're going to keep on trucking. Come on, guys. This is for a good cause. <laughs> so uh, we will defeat the rest of the enemies that move. The, the, those enemies that we that don't move, we don't care. And we don't want to do anything about them. Yeah, um, one of them is really powerful. and Yeah. Actually, we probably wouldn't have much trouble killing her, killing her in a task, but... We yeah. don't need to, so we don't. Yeah, I'm gonna interject for just one moment. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we actually as soon as you said that, we actually just did get a uh, one dollar donation from Taters saying Briar and I may be sick at home, but this whole weekend we've had a brief chance to feel kind of normal thanks to this event. Thanks to all the runners, staff, and volunteers who helped put this on. Task giving 2021. Sure. Thanks for that donation. Um, so now that we more or less clear all the enemies, now we will use Florina, Heat, and um, uh, Hawkeye to cover Talos because of the, the last four turns, I think we will get reinforcements and they are going to be Wyvern Knights that we will spawn uh, on mountains. Um, but we can use our units to cover three of those four tiles, so only one enemy unit will spawn. So only flying units and berserkers can actually uh, walk on mountains. They are pretty big, uh, basically. And since we only have two flyers and one berserker, well, that's uh, that's it. Yeah. So we do have to kill the two wyverns that will spawn. Uh, it's not too much of a problem because Florin is just that good. Yep. Yeah. So, there is another fire we could get by this point, but totally not worth it. Yeah, definitely not. Um, so we are going to finish this map soon, and then we will go to chapter 25. Chapter 25 is a cease map. Um, so basically this is why we get Eric Spring. So there are two versions of chapter 25. One is, is if our magic, some four specific magic units get more experience than four physical units up to this point. Um, so that's why we gave uh, Eric the experience because by default we will go to the fist, to the other map. The other map is our road map that we need basically to defeat every single enemy. And believe me, there is a lot of enemies in that map. But in this, in this case, we since we got to this map, we got to seize instead, which is nice. We also used Louise to create this mage who has a bolting tone that we will use later. And yeah, so we definitely will prefer this map instead of the other because of how much time you actually waste defeating all the enemies in that map. Yeah, right now we are just killing whatever is coming at us, but 
it's like that's it that's all there is to do everything else is just going to stay static and then and like the problem is uh right now at the start of the map there is some snow and that prevents us from moving really fast and uh, really really far away yeah uh it will go out pretty much once we reach the place where the snow isn't going to be a problem because it's, it's not snowing inside uh but until then uh we have to uh Move only three tiles per three tiles, and you really think, and at this point, you really think, hey, mounted units are really good. <laughs> yeah. Also, Louise, I made her specifically to actually kill a bishop that has a push tone. Push tone is a basically a long range uh, light tone. Um, he, he will be basically just attacking any units uh, for five turns, so I just the kill date instead so we that doesn't happen it's not like an issue but it saves time so we go with that so florina is about to enter the this castle or whatever it is so she will now have full movement inside of it so like just like the grand grand spain so now the idea is basically that florina will drop Hollywood. Uh, she will also deal with one or two of these units. He will drop, she will drop Hollywood, and then we will see the next turn. And, and now they know the storm, the snowstorm is clear, so these enemies will move as normal, so just we deal with them. And then we will drop uh, Hollywood, like I said previously, and yeah, we're going to wait uh, to finish the map soon. And this mage. Uh, just uh, uh, above, Elliot will move out of the way, so polite, so nice. Um, the, if, he, if he were to stay where he was, we wouldn't basically be able to at least see his, in this turn. Yeah. Um, so, did we ever explain? Do we think we have time right now to explain uh, how RNG Manip works? Um, uh, we will go to the next map. Give me a second so I can explain I think, that. So, I we, think I'm we next. Have, yeah, I think I just made it up. My stream doesn't work anymore. Sorry, what? I I'm not connected to the or the whatever. Uh, I'm still good on it's still good on my end. So okay. Um, so explaining this map, basically, these maps we need to. To basically uh, make uh, uh, help so Sefiel, this green unit in the middle of the map to survive. We need to defend him and we need to go all the way inside this castle to deal with enemy units and uh, get our way up to him. There is a the the, the, the glitch that the Grand Grand Spain before helps help us basically to to escape a lot of this. But this is going to be for a new version, I guess, for now. But for now, we have to deal with this. So the idea is basically that we want to move Pet, Florina, and Marcus all the way inside the castle, deal with the enemies there, deal with all the enemies that moves. And we also want to rescue all the green units so we don't have the other phase message each time in each turn. Uh, this, that's Nino. Say hi to Nino. Nino will not be there in a while. Sad face. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we will move uh, Florina with Ben and Marcus all the way forward so they, they can deal with enemies. This is another unit, Jafar. Jafar is... He, there's a possibility that he dies depending on how RG goes. Um, there's also a possibility that he survives completely. So it's kind of random. But we, of course, ma try to manipulate him, but it's kind of hard. Because you manipulate in player phase. Uh, then you get the results of player phase and then enemy phase. And then after all the enemy moves, there's other phase, so it's hard to like manipulate other phase here, specifically in really long maps like this. Yeah. Um, to explain a little bit about how RNG works, so RNG is like a list of numbers, it's completely fixed uh, when you boot up the game, so you can actually just... Once you find a strat, uh, even in real time, you can actually reproduce it every time, as long as you always use the same amount of uh, actions. Uh, whether it's like pass retracing or uh, or just doing normal attacks and stuff. Um, so in a like even in real time, it's actually completely possible to fully manipulate RNG. It's just going to take a lot longer than what Das is doing. Like every time. The, Tass is like burning RNG for longer than 5 seconds. 
for um, or even like two seconds, there is like thousands of random numbers that are burned at the same time. Well, in real time, burning like two thousand ran random numbers, it takes me about a minute, <laughs> given good mm -hmm. conditions. Yeah. Um, the thing uh, with RNG manipulation is that we use like a uh, um, nano just grid here, by the way, just highly highlighting that. So basically, to manipulate but to burn RNGs, the same RNG that is used for combat is the same that is used for drawing the path when you move the, your cursor when you select a character. So basically. You wobbling this cursor will make the RNG table generate a new path and that will burn our, our, our random numbers up and then we can kind of manipulate well, the results in a way that the player finds we can almost guarantee we can always guarantee that we create create um Nina will die here by the way so yeah she's done uh, it's faster to so that if she dies it's faster basically so it's kind of tricky and play face we can basically guarantee to always get a grid like just like paint it right now but an enemy face is really difficult because of all the enemies that moves and depending on how they move uh, some random numbers get burned some others don't and it's it kind of can, can get complicated at that point so we defeated the ursula ursula is the boss of this map by defeating her we uh, basically stop all reinforcements on this map so that was worth getting and we will continue to defeat all the enemies that moves and then we will rescue all the green units we have already rescued Jafar and then after that it's pretty much wait there is also some divas running around uh, picking up uh, stuff there are two Items specifically that we want, but for example, a brave lance was just preferred. Uh, basically, a thief just got that from chest. We specifically want the boots and the rescue staff. The rescue staff already was uh, a stall, I believe. Um, basically, these thieves will run around and they will we will get to kill them at some point. Yes. Um, so, talking about enemy phase back, back in like nine years ago, the only tool we had uh, back then was just a tool to view. Uh, the orange list. Uh, mm -hmm. We didn't have the tools we have right now to like. Uh, we got the boots when I went here. So yeah, sorry, I'm uh, We didn't have the tools uh, to like go through enemy phase and uh, check what enemy phase it is. If it's good, then we move on to the next uh, random number and stuff. So mm -hmm. by then, I, I can't imagine. Like I can't actually imagine uh, how difficult it is to actually get the proper uh, enemy phase you want, especially for a task where you want that many crits. Uh, nowadays, there is a lot of really good tools to uh, figure out what enemy phase is going to be. Uh, specifically, uh, Lapogne made a tool that allows him to know where all the strings he wants is like he he is going to tell the script hey i want a three percent crit on this enemy and then on this enemy and the tool will tell him what uh, where the rig is uh so that would make this task much easier to make for sure yeah um we cleared the previous map and now we are going to turn to this this is a road map so we need to defeat all enemies and uh, this is a really long map generally speaking um the strategy that we want to go is florina we go to the left deal with the enemies then get a warp, a warp staff and the village on the lower left corner. Uh, Marcus with pen will clear all the, uh, the enemies in the middle, at the top, and the left as well. While Hawkeye will deal with the enemies at the right. So there's a lot of divide and conquer strategies in this map specifically. And there's another thing that uh, the game doesn't tell you. There are basically four really huge uh, sections of the map that if you land on it, it will trigger reinforcements. I mean, like really long reinforcements. We want to avoid that. And one of those big blocks is the, the, the top left corner where the boss is. We will step on that, but we will clear the map at that same turn. So we will get the reinforcements, even if we step on them. Yes. Um... If you're doing, uh, if you're using the um, ACG uh, enemy control glitch, uh, using uh, using the door staff, you can actually get an extra mine, and this chapter is a very good place to use a mine because that uh, allows you to save going all the way to the top and coming back, 
and also it makes uh, killing the boss much faster as well. Yeah, and we will, uh, like Pedro don't say, we will use a mine here. Uh, we will oh, drop it here. this turn. Sure. Yeah, it will drop this turn with paint there. And then we will control all of these enemies next turn. So they basically kill themselves, which is like why. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, the great thing is you can uh, manipulate every enemy individually this way. Yeah, so basically all the enemies will get crit back. Um, yeah, we will also move the boss all the way down so we can actually reach it within the next turn. We will also make him drop the iron room. He, is, he, he, he has an item basically that uh, negates critical, so you can critical him normal, normally. We make him drop that item completely and we actually replace that item with a mine. So we actually get another mine to use in, another, in a future chapter. Yes. Uh, so that's in that, another chapter where we won't use a mine, okay? <laughs> exactly this. It's really funny because this track that is, uh, is used here, I'm pretty sure it's textbook what is still used in the RTE speedrun nowadays. Like, yeah. straight up, th there is really no difference outside the fact that there is a lot more crits here. <laughs> Yeah, so since we are manipulating all the enemies to create, uh, basically we don't need to to like uh, worry about like not getting like a fast session because we are just creating everything. Um, bro, there is any donation by any chance? Uh, yes, we actually do have one donation. We have a twenty-five dollar one from anonymous. No comment, but we greatly thank you for your donation. Thank you for the donation. Uh, make sure if you can donate at least one dollar, just go ahead. Uh, this is all for a good cause, and this is something that we would like to have every single year, if possible. So uh, it's our like uh, our opportunity to actually make this grow into a really big event. Out of curiosity, would you have a, a, a new task to present for this event if it uh, now that you know that it will happen next year? Or, well, if you knew that it would happen next year, rather? I would have liked it. I specifically would have liked to actually update this task. Ooh. Yeah, um, the thing is that I have been so drawn into Mega Man tasking, so... But yeah, definitely that's something that we can work out and make things happen this year. Nice. Um, if you are interested, there is another task of this game that it was done by TR143 that was supposed to come join here but wasn't able mm -hmm. to. Uh, but it wasn't uh, of this mode. I think it's uh, Lean Hard and um, Hollywood Normal. I think that's it. Yep. I believe uh, so, yeah. And it was very recent. I think it's like two years old now. Uh, so it uses all the new glitches that we found uh, in this game. Yeah, I said I believe he didn't use the glitch um, for the lower left, the top left uh, tile glitch. Yeah. So there is a glitch in this game that I that we discovered recently. Basically, if uh, something in the map changes, anything like a, a door open maybe, or something, any kind of change in, with, inside the map, the cutscene can actually have, make this happen as well. It will make the top left tile in the map glitchable. So if an enemy lands there, if you're set in a very specific position, you can actually control the enemy for some reason in the after you reset. So that's pretty yeah. neat. And uh, it's pretty hard to actually get an enemy to the top left corner though. Yeah, uh, I developed uh, strategies for that, but like RTA, it's really complicated to actually get that. Uh, it's really complicated in this game, at least in FE7, but all um, ECG glitches uh, are actually doable in FE8 as well. There is just no mine for it, but it's also possible in um, Sacred Stones. And there is a map on the frame route that makes it really easy, and as well as uh, Chapter 5X. Uh, so you would see that in, uh, in the current speedrun of that game. Yeah, so uh, one quick note, uh, we specifically move Marcos in this position and those three snipers will, will, won't reach uh, Marcos with the, with the Ballista. Ballista has uh, specifically 10 range and we are specifically 11 range out, uh, outside, of, uh, away from that Ballista. So that's why all of those snipers prefer to actually come to Marcos so they will die 
uh, main concern. So this is a, a unskippable uh, cutscene. Basically, Ellie will now can promote. Uh, so he will now be mounted. So he will now have seven moves. For some reason, he doesn't have eight moves like Paladins, but okay. Um, Those are amazing stats. Look at that promotion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the next chapter is chapter 28. It is a claim space chapter. So basically, we need to move Eliwood to a specific uh, spot. We will use uh, Eliwood, Niels, and Pent. So the idea is that Pent can you can rescue Eliwood from that because there are three paths to the to the main area at the top. But we rescue Eliwood, so he comes to this path. Normally, he won't be able to actually do that. And then in the next turn, we will also warp him all the way to the top. And also, there is a glitch here. There's these lava tiles. When an enemy lands on them, you can reset a specific frame, and then you can actually control the enemy. So we move the boss out of the way, because normally you, well, Eliwood is not able to defeat this boss uh, with his stats. So we move it out of the way, so then Eliwood can actually clean the spaces. And now we get this long, unskippable cutscene. Uh, this is something in regards to plot. Uh, uh, since we are uh, using a very cl a clean game, we actually cannot escape it at all. If we were to beat the game previously, we will be able to do that. But yeah. Yeah, That's I feel like this is more of a glitch than anything because you can't actually advance as fast as you would normally. Like if you press A, usually the text is going to fully appear. But right now you are stuck with one... Uh, one character per uh, like I don't know a uh, second I don't know I, I don't know how to frame. say that but frame I guess it's not frame because that would be much faster but yeah yep uh oh there's a dragon <laughs> so you you gotta slay the dragons right that's how it works yeah you see it you have to slash it <laughs> look at that it always so strong. You just destroy the dragon in one in one attack. Well, actually, in that last chapter, the boss can even move out of the way normally. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah, I completely forgot about that. And uh, kill Ali in that doing that, but that's another problem. Yeah. Well, there is any way for people to to jump in. Uh, yeah, we actually have a $15 donation, and I hope I'm saying this name right, from uh, Cadizer saying, by far the fastest speeds in the TAS are in the Grandmaster maps, just saying. And that is actually going to lead into some new incentives that we have live now. Want to see Super Viper T302 destroy the 10 star bonus nonstop? Let's get those donations in. Also, we have the Celestial TAS Expert and Grand Master Incentive. Some incredible content on the table, so you guys don't want to miss this. Yeah, well, that, that sounds really exciting. So, well, yeah, go to the of the game. We've met him a few times before, but we skipped all those scenes. Yeah. So, yeah, the game has a villain. Yeah, and he's trying to resurrect the dragon. Like, basically, all Fire Emblem games. <laughs> also, glitch frame right there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, you, you know that dancer that we've been using for so long now? Really, really, really good, because moving twice is really good and good. Mm -hmm. uh, we just killed her. Right. We just killed... Uh, just in peace. The, that, that was a dragon, and that was also uh, pretty much as a uh, Hollywood's crush. So, just mm -hmm. just kill kill this waifu. Yeah. Every chat. yeah, sometimes. So we are closing to the end of the of the, of the dust, where we just have to wait for this long cutscene to at the end. Um, is there any kind of things that we haven't expl explained about the game that would be like the best? Oh, moment um, so. so something worth mentioning, and uh, I believe that this run will have this problem is that um, so so uh, this test isn't actually uh, uh, playable on console because uh, the run that we had back then had a glitch where Canas would appear as a trade in chapter 19 uh, and would burn a lot of RNG for it. Um, so that's another problem that was so bad here. 143, he made a, an updated ROM uh, which fixed, fixed that glitch and another one as well. Oh, yeah. uh, if you don't record Dorcas, 
Um, oh, that's yeah, another problem. I with this guy. Encountering that, I didn't realize that it was the bad wrong. Yeah, uh, so, like, the front fight is that because of that, uh, I had to, when I routed uh, this game on console, I had to figure out RNG Manip but, uh, of chapter 19, but we set the Lua script, so completely just with the GBA, and uh, yeah, it was rude. <laughs> Yep. The, there is actually uh, actually some decent ways to figure out uh, what uh, what the list of errands you have, um, like only by uh, just just with the game. But you can only tell if it's over fifty percent or under fifty uh, fifty. Um, but like still, it's going to take a while, and you are going to need a sheet next to you to, to tell like, hey, this is over fifty, this is under fifty, etc. Et et yeah, so instead of taking like, like three get... seconds, it takes like three hours. It's really fun. Well, once you get forty-seven of those on over and under fifty things, you can just plug it into some tool which may or may not exist, and uh, figure out the exact RNG state. I suppose, yeah. Also, Krog, if there is any relation, feel free to interrupt until we actually get to the next chapter. Yeah, this cutscene isn't over yet. Uh, and this, this cutscene right there is uh, probably the big reason why uh, the task is longer than uh, RTA. Mm -hmm. uh, because a speedrun would just skip that entirely. Also, another thing that we never mentioned is that uh, when you clear the game once, you can actually hold A to make units move twice faster. Um, so right now, units are moving twice slower than what I'm usually used to. Yeah, they um, what, four, for, four, uh, four frames per tile, I think. Yeah, 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 something like that. They basically move one quarter, quarter of a tile per frame. And if you clear the game, they move like half a tile per frame. Something like that is. Yep. Um, gonna quickly go to the bathroom. We'll be real. Uh, we'll be back real quick. Yeah. So that's another like big reason why uh, starting from a clear file, uh, like it's going to make it uh, to to make this task really long. Um, yeah. Like the, the fact that we have to start in with Lin normal mode, it doesn't lose that much time. I'd say like thirty seconds, mostly because you have to record Dorcas. Um, but other than that, it's unlike this cutscene, obviously. But at least we get to see four blades used. Oh, why does that deal five damage when it says it was said it would deal thirteen? Um, Fire Emblem Seven. Okay. <laughs> this game um, has a few glitches. Let, let's just right, that, oh, by the way, that was one of only two places you will actually see uh, battle animation in this entire run. And I'm right. So battle animations uh, in this game and in like most Fire Emblems are really, really nice to see. And if you actually want to enjoy this task about with uh, battle animations and being able to actually see uh, this, uh, like what the display hit is, what damage you're supposed to do, what the crit percent chance is, there is a task that was like a video that was, uh, that was available on YouTube. It was made four years ago and it's uh, basically this task but with animations. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay, so I'm back and they still see the cutscene. <laughs> yep. So it's about to end, I believe. Yeah, pretty much. Hey, I, so we... I used to run FF10, I'm used to have long cutscenes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's almost over. Yeah, Niels will see her. He's dead. Sister and uh, the big old screen. Not available in the next chapter because he doesn't. It's, well, he just lost his sister. Yeah. Look at his sad face. Is terrible. Th this game has some like Nergal is actually a very interesting character. It's re just really sad that like it's never explained properly uh, what his lore is unless you go to some really complicated, stupid chapters to reach. Um, yeah. But basically, Niels and Ninian are um, uh, Nurgle's um, sons and daughter, and uh, he just lost his mind at some point and just 
doesn't remember why he wanted to open the dragon gate. It was just to find his children again. Um, to, find, now, to find their mother. Yeah. So, we are in chapter 20, 29, and so this is a survive chapter, and now uh, you will see a lot of green units, so basically we, are to, we will rescue them, so we escape the other phase message. Um, we, use, we will use Marcus to deal with the enemies here, by the way, that Marcus is level 20, so he won't get any level ups anymore, so we will use him, because that's, we will skip, with that we will skip the previous game animation. Then we will clear off the enemies at the top here. One important thing to note is that these archers have a poison ball, or uh, not uh, so it, uh, each one of them has a poison has a poison ball. And if you actually get hit by the poison ball, you actually get points on. And then at the beginning of each turn, until you are curved for that poison, you actually get uh, like an animation. So it's fundamental to to avoid getting hit by these poison balls. Um, yeah, it's not uh, dangerous. It's just you know huge time waste. Yeah, basically, yeah, it's dangerous for, for a task. <laughs> so we also use Louise to deal with some of the enemies on the right. She has a longbow, so she is able to to attack a tree range. Um, and we got that longbow in chapter 18, I believe. Yeah, it's been a while, definitely. So the boss is Danny. He has a message for Lord Rangel. That's basically all the dialogue that he has. Wait, you on the, we forgot to tell them what the message is. I await you on the Dread Isle. <laughs> yeah. So you might notice that we have another green mule that, that we didn't rescue at the top. So the reason we left that completely off is because the druid that you see at the top, at the bottom, has a sleep. Uh, he has a sleep staff. So he will put to sleep this green unit, and with that, since he's the only sleep, uh, green unit on the map, uh, but he sees, but he's asleep, then the the other phase message is skipped completely. So you can see a lot of green <laughs> thingy. So basically, that means that uh, a unit has rescued another uh, a green unit. Yeah, when you rescue a unit, you actually lose uh, half of your stat, uh, offensive stat, so you lose uh, half of your strength, uh, strength, I'm not sure. Speed. Skill and speed, yeah. So that means that like you're really not going to deal, be able to do much uh, fighting. Um, worth noting that the extra mind that you would get from getting the door staff, you would use in this chapter, and basically just unequip everything, everyone except the boss. Um, so that way you don't have to kill anything. Yeah, I, I remember we used to do that uh, for Taz, but uh, it was better to use it for God of Destiny, so that the chapter where Lino so Joy is... Um, and yeah, so we will clear yeah, out the, the rest of the enemies here, so then we actually can get to can skip all the turns really fast. Sorry, Lino, what, you were going to say something? Yes, uh, you, you, we still have a mine in uh, our inventory, but we'll keep it for the next chapter instead, uh, because it saves yeah. like 30, se uh, 30 extra seconds in RTA, so I believe a little more in task. Um, yeah. Hey, his door casts. Well, that army trust nobody. Fire Emblem. That's the reason why it's like a meme for Fire Emblem. Oh if you want to have a laugh, look at YouTube and look for a Fire Emblem commercial. <laughs> you can see Dorcas told you actually that, which is really hilarious. It's too bad that you didn't make Dorcas die on this, at this moment, the memes, but... Guys, yeah. the frames. <laughs> I don't know, so, it's this... Uh, Seven Nino. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. see, since we already cleared out the enemies, we don't get enemy, uh, the enemy phase, so we pass through the turns really quickly. So we are going to check the chapter 30. This is the second to last chapter. And the idea here is basically to, to seize with Eliwood. We will use the mine here, because as you can see, there is a lot of enemies here. And we would just rather go fast in that regard. So Florina picks Hollywood, uh, Neil's dance. So and we warp using pet, so Florina reaches further. Hey, by the way, Florina used the boots uh, way long ago, and uh, we forgot to actually say that. So she now has 10 moves instead of 8. Um, so we will trigger the, the mind glitch here. 
and we will make a lot, all the enemies that move to drop their weapons so they don't move. And we will also move Lim, uh, Limstella, it's, yeah, it's Limstella is her name, the boss basically to move out of the way so anyone can see this without any issue. Limstella is a really beef up boss, like normally sages aren't as strong as she is. Um, so yeah, next turn we will seize with uh, Eliwood, and then we will go to the final chapter. I don't think we actually needed the mine for safety or anything, Florine is no. plenty strong now, but <laughs> it's it just a lot of time. Yeah, way a lot of time. So we're in the final chapter, so the, 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 the final chapter has two parts. We have to beat all, most of the bosses that we previously faced. Pen will use the Bolting Tom to actually kill Ohai. Uh, so basically these are morphs, uh, another version of the original bosses that we defeated along our path. So this is basically a Mega Man run now, where we have to refight all of the bosses at the end. Um, we will use the rest of the units to actually deal with the rest of the morphs. So Luis kills a um, yeah, um, sniper. How can we deal with Ursula? So we open. We can also open the door. We don't need to wait for them to open itself themselves. So we use Hawkeye there. We will use Atlas with the bulletin tone to kill Germ. Uh, we will do earlier. <laughs> yeah, Florina will deal with this sniper, and then we will use. I believe we will use Nils here. Yeah, I suppose. Oh no, we did. Oh no, we did it. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Michael's one oh, one of these doors opens every turn, mm -hmm. but uh, we can open the doors ourselves. So. Yeah, so I believe the the key that we installed is for this as well, um, because Matthew will be used in other places. So look at the Elwood. Elwood just stayed with a druid, a level uh, nineteen druid, <laughs> and he didn't didn't even get a level for it, which is nice because that's gave save some animation. Yeah. Which is weird because at this point you will think, well, it's not a boss, so yeah, yeah maybe that because of that. So Marcus will deal with this with Kenneth. This is one of the bosses. By the way, all of these bosses drop like a super powerful weapons that we don't need anymore. <laughs> Basically, the idea is that we will need to use this against the final boss that we you will see a little later on. So this turn will. We will use, we'll open the last door. We also will use bolting to create Linus. And we will use Pen to kill the uh, Bed Brenda with uh, with uh, Excalibur. That's a legendary animaton. And I believe we will use Ether now. Ether, level one Ether will deal with a level 19 person, uh, uh, warrior. <laughs> so as you can see, he's level one. <laughs> so he, he just gave God his first level up. It's placing so hard. So now Florina will deal with Joy, and then the last part of the or uh, this the last part, uh, area of this part will open up. We will use Nils to dance with Arthur, so Arthur can use the Luna Tone against uh, Nerlo, the, the main boss of the game, the, the the arch enemy of the game. Basically, as previously said, Luna Tone negates resistance, so it's basically it's like if you were hard to have zero zero defense against it. We use uh, Nils to dance Arthur. By the way, Athos, we just got it this chapter. It's a pretty big up uh, sage, basically, that can use any kind of magic. Yeah, we use so. Nikos with Philos Mind to actually increase his mind with Totem. And with Luna, since we negate, uh, negate resistance, we can one hit KO the final boss with a critical. An and that's an exact kill. It deals exactly 120 damage, yeah. which is the boss. His HP. Yeah. So, yeah, just like that, we've cleared up Fire Emblem. We build an army, we didn't trust anybody, and here we are. I think it was the final in, uh, input, or is it because, uh, when you save? I, I'm not sure anymore. Uh, for that, it's uh, uh, in the last input, so I believe that's when you skip the yeah. save, I believe. Yeah, so that was the final input, because uh, after that, the cutscene is just going to play itself. Yeah, I'm so yeah. Sure. That's my evening. I uh, hope you all guys uh, really enjoyed it. Um, this all from this all part of world is all just cutscenes. Uh, we really enjoy being able to be in this marathon and actually help uh, for a good cause. Uh, commentate this game for you all. Uh, so if you like this kind of content, you can follow me up. Uh, I'm Rulamen One. You can follow me on YouTube. Basically, YouTube slash C slash Rulamen One. I post videos weekly. I right now I'm more focusedly on Mega Man runs, but tasks nonetheless. Uh, where can they find you guys, by the way? 
Um, Twitch and YouTube uh, works. Um, Boost with my name. Uh, right now I'm doing a Fire Emblem 6 LTC, which is a, well, kind of different from speedrun, but pretty interesting nonetheless, I guess. If you want yep. some more Fire Emblem stuff. I am not really active online that much anymore, so you can't really find me anywhere. I mean, I, oh, that's have a, I have a YouTube channel and stuff, but I haven't uploaded anything in years. It's a brummy on that this world. <laughs> so yeah, this is the final the task, and this is Roland Main One signing off. Have a good one. Alright, see ya. Alright, see ya. And enjoy the rest of the event.